Well, that's already a trivial question because I uh, I work in uh, several uh, communities in three language fields. I play in three language fields, so and in different languages, I, my name sounds differently. So my uh, uh, original name is uh, Nikita Nikrasov. I come from Russia, and then. Uh, in the United States, or in English, my name is uh, Nikita Nekrasov. And then in Francais, je suis Nikita Nekrasov. Uh, three, three different ways of, of <laughs> naming me. Uh, I'm, uh, currently, I'm a permanent professor at the Simon Center for Geometry and Physics in Stony Brook, United States. And before going there, uh, I was a permanent professor here at IHS from 2000 till 2013. But of course, I, I visited IHS before that and after that, uh, both unofficially and unofficially. So I have a very deep, deep connection to this place. For the first time, I think the first time I came here, it was very unofficial. I came here to play volleyball at the uh, uh, Residence de l'Ormai uh, with the, some uh, visitors. And uh, that was uh, kind of a very important experience, <laughs> as uh, I learned later. So, uh, but then uh, I think I actually had one scientific visit uh, I think it was a visit for lunch. I came here to meet with Maxim Kansevich. It was probably in 1998. Uh, I was visiting uh, some university in Paris. Uh, I was at Harvard at the time. And uh, I had some questions I wanted to discuss with Maxim uh, together with my collaborator, Andrei Losev. So we took the train, came down here. We didn't actually come to the IHS, we met at the restaurant uh, which no longer exists, unfortunately. It was a very nice restaurant, uh, Au Pyrenees, I think it was called. Went bust, as many, many restaurants here. Uh, and uh, I think, uh, yeah. even though I didn't get the answers to my questions, and Maxim probably didn't get answers to his questions, but somehow we established some, some, some sort of connection which uh, uh, helped me later. So I was offered a job here in the year 2000 and I came uh, the same year and so uh, became part of my life, uh, part of my family. My children were born here so I literally have my roots in here uh, both uh, scientifically and personally. And uh, so I think I did my best work while I was here. So it was uh, so far, maybe, <laughs> hopefully not. Uh, so that's that. Oh, the fondest memory. There were many, it's many nice, nice memories. Uh, Since uh, I lived through very you know, important personal experiences here, there are many things which uh, uh, for me are emotionally attached to, to, to IHS. But I guess scientifically the most important thing is uh, the work I'd, I've done, uh, which was uh, in 2002, I wrote a paper which kind of was the end of the long period of research for me at that time. So seven years, it looked like a long period. But then it began a new venue of research, uh, which, is, uh, which, is continu which continues to this day. In fact, this uh, conference, this school is also part of that. Uh, so it's what grew out of that, of that work. Um, so uh, to put things in the perspective, I actually so the f I came to Paris for the first time in 1994. Uh, I was I was not even a student there. I was finishing my studies in Mo in Moscow and moving to Princeton to, to graduate school. And in between, I uh, I came here to I came to Paris to 
to attend a conference. I was not even invited, I was too young for that. Uh, it was the uh, International Congress of Mathematical Physics. It took place, I think, in, uh, in UNESCO, in, in, in center of Paris. And I came by bus, for, for, it was a long route uh, from Prague, so first Moscow to Prague by train, and then from Prague to Paris by bus. It was a night bus, it was, I was exhausted. And in the morning I went to, 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 to some lectures, and there was a lecture by Edward Witten, who came from Princeton, who was presenting his work with Zyberg. It was it just came out, or maybe even before it came out, it was the summer of 1994, where they claimed to have solved uh, Kind of a prototypical example of, of quantum field theory, which uh, which is not the theory which we believe ex describes our, our our world, but at the time it was considered to be maybe the best uh, approximation to that in the sense that it's the theory in which you can s probably compute something exactly, uh, and so see some qualitative features which which we believe take place in in, in, in actual uh, in nature. And so it was, a, it was an important uh, work, but uh, from the point of view of, let's say, mathematical physics, it was really a conjecture. It was some educated guess, which they made based on, uh, on, uh, on, the, on the work. Um, and that influenced a lot of people, but I was so exhausted at the times that actually I literally fell asleep during the talk. But even I understood that it's important work and uh, something has to be... Uh, but th there are things to be understood about it. So it was not, it was not rigorous by, by mathematical standards and something, something has to be done. And so that was basically the work which I finished in 2002 when I already came here. But uh, in order to do what I did, uh, lots of little things had to be done before that. So. Uh, and one of these uh, little things involved uh, the notion of non-commutative geometry, which was uh, introduced uh, by Alain Kohn. Uh, so Alain Kohn is technically a professor at Collège de France, but he actually is physically present at IHS uh, very strongly. So he has uh, uh, share uh, Leon Mochan. So it means that. He has an office here, he comes to, to have lunch with us, but uh, he's, uh, uh, he's not paid by the institute. But nevertheless, he has uh, a lot of influence on, over the, the domains of research here, and he had as well. And so, uh, even though for me uh, that subject seem, seemed very abstract, I was taught uh, you know, in, a, in a school which preferred actual geometry to something more abstract which is this non-commutative geometry thing. But it turned out that it was very useful for, for the research I was doing. Even though it's a research in physics, but uh, um, things I do involve a lot of mathematics. So, and so some people say that if it's not even physics, it's more ma mathematics and physics. So it's kind of a borderline uh, uh, domain. Um, and so that was one of the reasons why, for me, it was interesting to come here because uh, non-commutative geometry was useful for my, for my research. And another reason was, of course, Maxim Kantsevich, who uh, introduced uh, a lot of uh, geometrical structures, uh, and also algebraic structures, which um, we believe will help us to understand what quantum field theory is. Actually. So this is not something we understand yet, but it's, we, we're all interested, both physicists and mathematicians. Well, it's a summer school, so it's, uh, it, it's a kind of a conference where uh, lecturers give uh, lectures which are aimed at uh, students, graduate students mostly. So the graduate students come from all over the world, so I see lots of uh, students from uh, Asia, from the United States, from Europe, from Russia. So it's one of the uh, activities which uh, IHS has been involved in recently, which I think is a very healthy thing. And I believe it's, this is actually the first uh, true physics school, summer school in, in physics. Uh, previous schools were more on the um, uh, mathematical side. 
So the subject of the school is called supersymmetric localization and exact results. Uh, this is the, the topic I already spoke about a little bit briefly. So in, in physics, we are uh, faced with the task of describing the nature, but nature is very complex. So it has, and has lots of players. Uh, you can't really describe uh, every, you cannot describe the phenomenon precisely because so many things are involved. So we usually make some approximations. We decide that if we want to describe the, you know, the, 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 the weather, the blowing in the wind, we don't need to know the structure of the atom. That's, that's irrelevant. But if we want to describe the structure of the atom, we probably don't need to know the atom here in my, on my hand. We probably don't need to know about uh, you know, the structure of some Andromeda galaxy or uh, something which happens very far away. So, uh, so we constantly make some approximations. We decide what's relevant, what's irrelevant. And, uh, and then we make some calculations which are always approximate. So they, they have some degree of precision, which in a good theory can be improved systematically if, if it's needed. Uh, but it's always an approximation. Nevertheless, sometimes there are sort of idealized problems which, uh, uh, in which the computation can be done exactly. So there are some trivial problems where uh, the, uh, uh, for example, the elementary particles which are playing role, uh, take, taking part in, the, in, in some event, don't interact, they are free. In this case, everything can be computed exactly, but it's not interesting because there is not, no interaction. And uh, I guess since the early year 2000, uh, nine, 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 uh, 1900, sorry, 1990, <laughs> 1990 uh, we um, slowly started accumulating examples of uh, computations in quantum field theories which are exact, which involve interactions, so they're non-trivial and they may teach us something about the uh, more sophisticated theories. And in all these computations, uh, a novel kind of symmetry is involved, the so-called supersymmetry. I mean, it's novel on the scale of physics, so it's, it was introduced in, uh, in the 70s. And that's a symmetry which relates uh, elementary particles of different kind, the particles uh, which, are so -called, which are called bosons, the particles which mediate interactions, like the particles of light, the photons, and the other particles which are called fermions, these are the particles which comprise the matter, like electrons. And when we interact with them, we perceive them, they have very different properties. So the bosons like to be together and fermions don't like to be together. Nevertheless, uh, mathematically it was found that there is this possibly a symmetry which relates them in, in a tricky way. And when such symmetry is present in the theory, uh, it turns out that uh, there are certain quantities which can be computed exactly. And uh, every time such a computation is done, there is some deep connection to mathematics, in particular to topology. And so the, the exactness of the computations in supersymmetric quantum field theories is related to the fact that in topology you can produce some invariants of uh, geometrical structures which are not sensitive to small details. And so it, and when, when when the, when the question you're asking is not sensitive to details, it's easier to produce an exact answer. Um, so, so that's what the school is about. It's uh, dedicated to supersymmetric super uh, field theories and the ways to compute uh, exactly correlation functions in those theories. It started with the uh, desire to uh, build uh, a machine which would drive itself. I was probably 10 or 11 and I wanted to be, uh, I wanted to be able to, to control it remotely using radio. So it started with some kind of uh, bricolage, as we say. Uh, it didn't work very well, very well. so I, my, my Engineering, engineering capabilities were not so good, but I was interested. But I got interested in uh, in the scientific part of that. So the physics 
and the mathematics of that. Uh, so that was one dri driving force. Another, f another reason was that I was uh, always fascinated by stars, as I mean, every probably every person at some stage is fascinated by stars. And uh, uh, I also was fascinated by computers because computers were a very new thing. So I had the bright idea of writing a computer code which would predict the uh, uh, you know, evolution of the star, so the future of the star, whether it will explode where it would become a supernova and then become a black hole or a white dwarf or something like that. And again, it also failed because, well, it's a complicated problem. Maybe some astrophysicists these days, these days can do that using supercomputers, but uh, unfortunately I sidetracked and decided that uh, predicting the future of stars is not ambitious enough. So one should predict the future of everything. And so that's how I got interested in string theory. <laughs> Ha, <laughs>
opportunity to do that without actually stepping out of my office. So I, but it's, it's not people I discover, it formulas. So, so I'm both uh, blessed and handicapped in, in, in liking formulas. So that's, uh, that's what uh, drives me. Um, and it's actually, it's very funny. I cannot really explain what is really the driving force. Some, so sometimes I just know that I have to sit down and, and do the calculation. Uh, even though I don't know what it will lead to, but I, it's, it's something inside me. So it's a, and it's, it's both, uh, it's both good and bad because, well, you, you have to, you know, separate yourself from, you know, from, from the society for a while to, to do that. So the, the, you, you become socially awkward. <laughs> Because well you you have you have something internal going on, and you can't really uh, be always present uh, when you need it maybe for your family or for your friends, um, and then it also it makes you miserable because if it may take a long time, and you cannot, uh, and so there's some frustration. You 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 try and you try and you try and it doesn't work and some. Some, there is some stupid mistake, or you don't, you can't find this mistake, and you know that this should be correct. But uh, when you actually write the formula, it doesn't work. Uh, or when you try to check yourself on the computer, something doesn't work. But then, you know, after, if you if you succeeded after some long period of frustration, that makes you, it makes it even more exciting. So when you want something and you have to really work hard to achieve that, that's that's the best thing which can happen. To you. I, uh, I mean, recently I, I, I spent two weeks uh, checking a formula which I conjectured, and two weeks with the help of a computer. So, so the formula had, uh, if I remember, I mean, the, the, it was a particular example. But to check that, I had to take a, make a sum of uh, more than 2,000 terms. So I, it's an, impossible to write them all on a piece of paper. But, but even to, to, to feed them into to a computer, in kind of a reasonable way, I had to split the problem into many many sub problems, and so two two, two weeks of uh, of uh, fear that maybe after you've done this all, it will not work, and then uh, and then if it doesn't work, you have to find out whether it doesn't work because the formula was wrong, or maybe you made a mistake because when you have two thousand terms, well, you make it's easy to make a mistake. And, and so it, it, it wouldn't work, it wouldn't work, and then I had to go on a trip with my son. And then in some hotel room at night, it finally worked. <laughs> it, was, it was so exciting. Uh, but I couldn't wake him up <laughs> to, to tell him that. Uh, so it's kind of um, funny that uh, you're excited, but uh, the only person you can share it with, maybe there are two or three people in the world you can share this excitement with. But, uh, Eventually, it maybe it will, will become more important, yes. It is a tough call, so, and many people say that uh, people like me are not physicists at all. We, we are at best mathematicians, and then most mathematicians don't think we're mathematicians because we use uh, uh, physics language and physics way of arguing, so we're not rigorous enough for mathematicians, so we're not mathematicians neither. So we're somewhere in between, and it's the same about nationality. So we are here we're in France, and uh, I was born in Russia, and I work in the United States, and it's all kind of melting and mixed. So lack of identity, lack of nationality, lack of uh, clear goal, but it works, so somehow it, I know inside, inside, inside of me I know that what I'm doing is right and there is some beauty to this and uh, to me uh, the beauty of the of what we write is most important thing. So the, I mentioned formulas, so formulas is a language in which we express uh, our findings and uh, these are like little bricks in the big building which we are which we are building, and eventually, when we are done, 
we will be able to confront this with, with nature, with experiment. Uh, maybe it will happen next year, maybe people who uh, look at the uh, early universe using the uh, map of the uh, cosmic uh, microwave uh, radiation will see some features which tell us that well, this, these are the features of you know, quantum gravity at the early universe. Maybe it will happen in 50 years, I don't know. This is a this kind of it's a long long route, but it's not the first time that uh, you know humankind is faced with long projects you know, to build uh, to build uh, 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 a cathedral, the Cathedral de Chartres, for example. It took I don't know how many years, hundred years, and maybe, uh, and uh, well, and there were people who were just. You know, piling, piling up stones, and there were people who, even though they were piling up stones, knew that they were actually building the Chartres Cathedral. So I, I'd like to think that I'm building a cathedral or something like that, but it may end up that being just a pile of stones. Who knows? It's, <laughs> it's a question of believing in yourself, and I believe. Mm -hmm.